Welcome to this quick introductory video about USB audio and what you need to know about it. Soon I'll be sharing a comparison review of a whole range of USB cables. And in order to understand why these cables might make a difference to the sound that you hear from your computer, I thought it was worth sharing some information about how USB audio works. The first thing that we need to know is that USB is actually still an analog signal, sort of. Ideally, a USB signal at any point in time would either be a 1 or a 0, that is 0 voltage, or a set voltage that's considered on or 1. That might be 3.3 volts, for instance. In reality, due to the physics of resistance, capacitance, and various other factors, the voltage across the cable is constantly in flux. It's raising and lowering, so it's more of an analog signal than a true digital signal. If you look at something like optical by comparison, an optical signal can actually be on or off. It's a light. It's either on as a light or it's off as a light. There's not a dimming as such the way there is with a voltage on a cable. So how exactly is it digital? The way that this essentially analog signal is turned into digital is that the DAC checks the voltages literally thousands of times every single second and looks for particular voltage levels. For USB 2.0, the signal levels are minus 10 to 10 millivolts would be considered low or zero and around 360 to 440 millivolts would be considered high or one. So as you can see, if the DAC is checking thousands of times per second and the variation of voltage is so small, then the timing and the precision of those voltages are crucial. So if the DAC checks the voltage at a moment that is not quite right, it could very easily see a voltage that's not what was intended by this, the source originally. When we start bringing into the picture the sorts of interference that can also happen, then you start to see why precision is so important. So any noise that's introduced could cause errors in the signal being received by the DAC. Remember, if it's fluctuating from, say, 0 up to about 3 volts, if there's any errors in timing and the DAC looks at the wrong moment, it might not get a full 3 volt reading. It might get something a little bit below that. Now, if that's then further influenced by noise, the noise can push the voltage read by the DAC closer and closer to the threshold where the DAC no longer knows is this a zero or is this a one. And that sort of noise can come from a variety of sources. It can come from crosstalk, which is where the two cables side by side, the left signal cable and your right signal cable, can actually interfere with one another. They create a small magnetic field around themselves and that can influence what each other is actually reading in terms of voltages. The power supply can also cause problems. There's a five volt lead in every single USB cable, unless it's been modified specifically. And that five volt power supply can carry all kinds of noise depending on the quality of the signal sent through that power supply. Electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference are also an issue. So if you're around Wi-Fi, if you've got your mobile phone nearby, if there's any radio frequency or electromagnetic field, which realistically anywhere that you're using a computer there are going to be, that can also get into your cable and affect the signal quality that is being received by your DAC. It's also important to understand that all cables are actually imperfect. It's impossible for cable to instantly change voltages because cables have resistance and capacitance. That is, they resist changing their voltage to a degree and it varies depending on the metals used. And they also hold electrons to a degree as well, meaning that if you want the cable to swing from zero to three volts, What's actually going to happen is when you go to move from 0 to 3, there's a slight lag. And then let's say after that you want to move the cable from 3 volts back down to 0 volts. What you're going to then experience is a very slight delay in how quickly the cable can drop all the way back down to 0. Put that into the perspective of the fact that your DAC is measuring thousands of times a second. Now any of those slight variations in how quickly the cable is able to raise a lower voltage can affect what your DAC sees at the other end and that can influence the sound that you hear. So hopefully it's becoming clear now that when you have the timing issues required by audio plus the noise that's inherent in almost every environment when using a computer, remembering that a computer itself creates noise, there's a massive chance that you're going to produce jitter in your sound. So the DAC is reading the signal thousands of times per second. The cable may be slightly delayed in reacting to either increase or decrease the voltage that's trying to be sent by the source. Combine that with slight influences over the voltage from outside things such as the power supply cable, crosstalk, radio frequency or electromagnetic interference, and all of a sudden you've got jitter. So jitter is essentially where 
the signal that's sent from the computer and what's meant to be getting to the DAC don't quite match up properly. Now I'm deliberately keeping this simple, I'm not an engineer um, and I'm trying to share this video for non-engineers so if you are an engineer and what the way I'm explaining this maybe is slightly um, layman's terms, that's the idea and, and uh, please be gentle with me in any comments that you share because this is just intended to be a quick overview to give people an idea of why a USB cable may make a difference. There are some amazing articles online that I use to research this about how and why USB signals are not truly digital, why they can be influenced by other, other factors, and a lot more about how the timing of the signal plus the exact voltages can be affected. Now, one of the things that often gets brought up is that there's error correction in USB transfer of data. And that's true if you're talking about data. So if you've got a file that's on your hard drive of your computer and you're looking to send it to an external hard drive, there actually is error correction back and forth between those two. So there's a check that happens that the hard drive controller of the external hard drive will send back a report saying, this is what I've received, is that correct? And your computer can either confirm, yes, that is correct, or it can resend the data if there was an error. In the case of music, music is, is a time-based thing. So everything about music has to be done in the moment. There can't be this back and forth checking of data. So what happens with, with USB audio is that there is no two-way error correction. The DAC outputs what it receives. It doesn't flick a signal back to your computer saying, hey, this is what I got, is that correct? It just receives it, and based on the timing information that it's working with, it produces what it thinks is the correct signal. So as you can see, there's no chance for any slight variations in timing or the influence of noise to actually be corrected via a cross-check back with the computer. What it receives is what it produces. So hopefully at this point what you're understanding is that USB cables could actually have a significant influence over the sound. If they're able to reduce the noise and if they're able to respond quickly to the required changes in the voltage coming from the source, then in theory they should be able to produce a nice outputting sound from the actual DAC and through to your amplifier. What we need to find out now is which cables work and which cables don't because there's so many designs on the market. So if you're interested to understand which USB cable you should be choosing, I'm going to be writing a full review shortly thanks to the people at AudioQuest who provided a whole range of all of their USB cables, plus a few USB cables of my own that I have. I'm going to be creating a huge comparison review that will hopefully answer some questions of what makes the biggest difference, where is it worth investing your money, and when is it starting to get into the land of diminishing returns. So hopefully you'll come over to my blog Passion for Sound at some stage and check out the review. It's probably a little way away from being published just at this point, but I'll share some links to it in this video as soon as I have produced that review. Thanks for watching and I hope this helped.